what's going on boys and girls so we are back here with another reaction video uh this one is called why i am leaving the linux community by pizza loving nerd um i'm curious to see uh how this one plays out um i always find these videos interesting why i'm leaving x y or z community Am I going to rag on him? Am, am I going to swear a lot? Well, if you've noticed, a lot of my videos have been less vulgar and more just kind of listening to actually what the people say because they aren't giving me a fucking ulcer. So let's get into it and see what Pizza Loving Nerd has to say about why he's leaving the Linux community. <laughs> Hey, what's up? Pizza Loving Nerd here. I have been running Linux for about, I'd say, a year and a half, and I have, for the most part, enjoyed my time on it quite a bit. However, recently, I have been having some issues with not Linux itself, but the community. Linux is a very good operating system. I actually have my uh, Linux setup right here on Arch, and it's supposed to look like Mac OS. However, lately I have been wanting to leave the Linux community and it's kind of hard to leave the Linux community with that when you have a Linux YouTube channel. So, yeah. So, when I first joined the community around a year and a half ago, it was a pretty cool community. There were some mean people here and there, like some people on the Gentoo forums and the Arch forums and stuff like that. However, those people, I didn't mind. However, recently, the Linux community... All I'm going to say, homie, is first thing off, uh, there's always going to be people who hate. It doesn't matter what community you're proud of. Windows, Mac, Linux, sports teams, take your pick. There, there are, There's always going to be people who are, well, quite frankly, douchebags. Uh, the, the, unfortunately, the reality of people being humans and all that jazz so okay um you've been in the likes of a year and a half i'm um, waiting to hear why you're leaving he has became very divided and it just is making me want to get out of this community the first thing that happened was the code of conduct change basically there was a new linux code of conduct and it pretty much divided the community on whether we should keep it or uh, get rid of it. Now, I'm not going to state my opinion on this video because I don't want to get scolded by a bunch of haters. Code of Conduct, the COC for the, the Linux kernel, I believe is what you're referring to. Short version, don't be a douche. That, that's really what the code, of, the code of Conduct basically boiled down to. Um... Some people liked it, some people didn't, yada yada, whatever. Um, I think even when, you, even when you have Linus saying that you have to take into account how you handle people. Now, there's so much their feelings, but how you interact with them. You know, wishing death upon them, you know, calling them the, essentially the best thing that ran down their mother's leg is not always the most constructive way to give uh, decent feedback, shall we say. However, this has severely divided the Linux community. This was the beginning of, in my opinion, the downfall of the Linux community. After this happened, the next major th Downfall? That's a little... a little much. Thing. Well, this didn't happen all at once, but this has kind of been gradually coming up, is the division between snaps and flat packs and app images. Some people love a snap, some people hate love a flat pack, and other people dislike either of them. Sorry for the cat in the background. <laughs> now, uh, I have gotten in several arguments about whether snaps and flat packs are good. Once again, I'm not going to get state my opinion because I don't want to get scolded. Oh, homie, if you're worried about getting scolded and about stating an opinion, YouTube is not the place to be. <laughs> um, short version, snaps, app images, and flat packs. 
Um, I'd rather see those than the 9,000 different ways that a, a dev, an RPM, etc. can be installed or how take your pick. Uh, I prefer having applications available, updated applications. I prefer not having to deal with PPAs. I prefer not to have to reach into the AUR to actually install stuff because, you know, once you start doing that, you tend to, oh, I don't know, usually break shit. Um, I think it is perfectly okay to have an opinion. People are going to scold you, quote unquote, in life. That's just the reality. Have an opinion. You're, you're, you're putting yourself out there, man. If you're going to put yourself out there, you're going to get scolded. You're going to get yelled at. That I'm not, I'm not, that it's just not words of wisdom, but it's just fact of the matter kind of thing. Another thing is lately more people have become more opinionated with their desktop. Uh, that's not new. Uh, most back then you wouldn't be judged for having GNOME as your desktop. However, now people get mad at other people for using KDE or GNOME, and some people say that their opinions are wrong and stuff like that. For example, at the moment, I prefer GDK desktops. How as far as opinions on GNOME and KDE, yada yada, whatever. Personally, I have no love loss for GNOME. GNOME, 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 GNOME. I don't begrudge people who decide to use GTK or GNOME. That's a personal flavor and personal choice. Um, those that rag on other people, there's a difference between playful poking and between being a douchebag. If they're being a douchebag about it, then yeah, they should be slapped about it. At the end of the day, it's whatever works best for you, homie. However, somebody scolded me for not liking KDE because... KDE knows how to use GDK and QT. Now, I, that's not a false statement, except I have my issues with KDE and that's why I don't use it. And while that is mostly true, some GDK apps, specifically Lollipop and stuff, don't run as well in GDK. As you can see, my original Lollipop... Uh, I'm assuming you mean don't run as well in QT or KDE or Plasma or whatever you want to call it review I did a while ago has a bunch of artifacting issues from the KDE. Later that day when I tested it on I think it was Cinnamon, it ran fine. And it also has some rendering errors, so see I'm not even in it. I'm so do note that Lollipop is very much dependent on a lot of GTK and a lot of GNOME stuff. So the fact that there may be artifacting and other issues based on the desktop environment is not unsurprising. Um, what most people should be saying is that the theming and the default look of GTK apps in KDE or Plasma is going to look more native than say uh, a QT app in a GTK based environment like GNOME will. I'm in the all artists section, but for some reason- The Linux community have just gotten super opinionated and I do not like that. Wait, wait, wait. So, you're giving an opinion about why you're leaving, which totally cool, your prerogative, but you're also don't like the fact that people are opinionated. Hello, irony. The final thing I'm gonna talk about is every once in a while. This usually happens around every one or two months. An article pops up that basically just. Uh, divides the community again. The one I'm going to talk about is the most recent one. It's this article about why Linux Mint should die, basically. This article came off to me as just unfair criticism to a piece of software that didn't deserve the criticism it was getting. Now what I mean
I mean by this is everything that the guy said in the article was completely unrelated to why he wants it to die. Shouldn't be. No. What. <laughs> You're referring to the Tech Republic article, which I've already done one video on. The Tech Republic article is basically stating he does not understand where Linux Mint fits in. The, the Linux Mint should die part is just a clickbait BS article titled to get get the keyboard warriors going. That That's all it's for. Interigo, he was talking about Interagos, which has obviously died off, and Scientific Linux, which are all spinoffs of other distributions, i.e. Interagos was a easier way to install Arch, and... Um, Scientific Linux was a very sp specific rel based distro that is no longer around. He's saying that something like Mint can go the way of those projects. The question is, if you uh, look at the entirety of the article, he's trying to very badly and poorly worded, I will say, but I think what he's trying to say is where does Linux Mint fit in now? Because before, Linux Mint's thing was, oh, awesome, I don't have to install Codex, I don't have to install Flash, it's literally all in the distro. Then when Ubuntu decided to add a little check mark to do all that crap when in the installer, a lot of the perks went away for Mint. So what's the point in Mint to him? That's totally a valid opinion to have and totally a valid question to ask. That's not playing devil as advocate. That is just simply giving their take and their view on it. Nothing wrong with that. The clickbaity article title, I'll give you that one though. I'm going to be stating my opinion, but still. This has divided the entire Linux community on whether Linux Mint should die or if it should stay a distro. Now, I personally think... It should stay because it was a very good distro. It it uh, was one of the it got one of the awards for the best overall distro on my distros awards video. So I personally want it to stay. Do I think Linux Mint should die? No, that's be very stupidly dumb to say. And why would we want a project to die? Mint has offered stuff to community more than the community will give it credit for, i.e. things like Nemo and stuff, you know, a file manager for, that is GDK-based that is not files, which is, well, yeah. Let's not talk about that. But at the end of the day, like, they offer a lot to the community that they do not get credit for. It's the same thing with Canonical and the stuff they do for Ubuntu. And we need it. We need an Ubuntu-based distro that doesn't use snaps, or that doesn't have system things embedded as snaps. Sure, Linux Mint does have flat packs, but it doesn't have any installed by default. Anyways. Have your personal opinion. You don't like the fact that Ubuntu has default by snaps on some things. That's your prerogative. Don't use it. Not that... Uh... What, what more do you want me to say, homie? It's this community has just gotten way too divided for me. And I am actually thinking about switching to Windows because of... Okay, so the thing I don't get with this entirety of this video so far... Excuse me. Is the fact that you think division is... A p difference of opinion is division. I don't buy into that difference of opinion based on be it technical merit, valid reasoning, constructive criticism, all valid. It's when you get into the blind hatred of something that division is a bad thing because you get, you get the people who don't like, Canonical's copyright uh, assignment and the way they do that 
for uh, the contributors agreement and that kind of stuff. It, like there is a bunch of different stuff that you can validly critique in say Ubuntu. You can validly critique in Linux Mint. There's stuff you can validly critique in Arch. There's valid stuff you can critique in Gen 2. There's val- there are valid constructive criticisms that can be made. Those are going to be up. Some are based on factual opinion. I you don't like snaps as a default in a distro. Perfectly fine. Valid criticism. Your take on it. Personally, I don't care. I just want the app to work. I don't care if it's a flat pack, a snap, an app image, whatever. Like, like my take on all this is use what works. If it's Windows, Mac, Linux, whatever, who cares? At the end of the day, this shit that we use is nothing but a bunch of tools and applications and interaction with hardware and software in conjunction to actually produce something for the interwebs. Uh, so do I think you should leave the Linux community based on divisive opinions or divisive factual takes on things? No, I think that is a short-sighted way of doing it. If you want to leave, that is totally your prerogative. I'm not going to sit here and convince you to, oh, Linux is the best community. I'm just going to simply say that if you're afraid of opinions, if you're afraid of being divisive, that is basically life. And I really don't know how else to put it to you other than that. Because really, at the end of the day, you want a... I'm just saying, this is what it sounds like. You want a kumbaya. And you're not going to get that. The world doesn't run like that. And despite what you might hear from certain aspects of left or right, it's not kumbaya. The world is not nice. The world is not pretty. The world is just as you see it. So if you do not like divisive opinions, if you do not like divisive takes on things, or if because of somebody having constructive criticism and you view that as decisive, uh, divisive, sorry. That is uh, an interpretation you might want to re examine on your part. Of the community. If I do switch to Windows, it will just be on my gaming PC. I will keep it running on my laptop. However, when your community get someone who has been a year long, year and a half long Linux user, then trying wanting to switch back to Windows because of the community, that's how you know that the community needs to be fixed. As for my Okay, you've been in Linux for a year and a half. I, this is not a dick measuring contest, and this is not meant as a... Uh, slight anything like that this is simply just what it is Linux has been in some way shape or form on some type of machine for me for the last 20 plus years Mandrake was my first thing the community now is far far different from the community then You have to be willing to look to find the good parts and the good spaces in the community. This is the same thing that we come to on the internet. There's so much information, so much opinion and all the other stuff. You have to find the signal to noise ratio. Because one thing I learned and one thing that somebody taught me is Take the 90% of the bullshit that somebody will give you and find the 10% that you can use. Take away the 95% of the bullshit that somebody will give you and find the 5% that somebody will give you. Filter the noise out. 
go to Biddle. They'll have different opinions, but they all get along. Go to Destination Lex. They have different opinions. They will all still get along. It is all about where you look for those opinions and those divisive topics. App images, snaps, you know, whatever. Linux Mint, take your pick. Just because somebody can, uh, likes to, like for me, I enjoy poking fun at GNOME. I don't do it in a harsh, well, okay, I do it harshly, but for me, my poking at the fun of GNOME, as in when I call, when I say that GNOME, <laughs> GNOME's motto should be features are bugs, it's not so much that I think GNOME rips all the features out. I just think GNOME has a problem with having features in it. And that's a design problem. When you go and start trying to take things out like file execution from the, oh, I don't know, file manager. It's a perfectly valid critique. You look at things and say, this is constructive. Most people sometimes don't always come across the most constructive way. There's a difference, like, can you deal with satire? Can you deal with people poking fun at things? That is really a more of an on you thing. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that everything is fine and peachy and perfect. Because you're going to find douchebags and assholes no matter where you go. I'll be the first to just say that I'm probably one of the biggest assholes when it comes to some things on here. But really, if if you are that easily taken aback by a community, maybe you're exploring the wrong community or wrong aspect of the community. Because I can tell you, some of the assholes that I've dealt with in Arch, be it the IRC or the forums, or some of the assholes that you would deal with in Windows, are the same assholes and the same sheeple that you'll deal with with Mac OS. It, it, they're all there. You'll run into them regardless. A channel. I am going to not make any Linux related videos for a while, however, I will still be making videos on free and open source software. So one thing I want to make more videos on is Android apps, there are, are a lot of good uh, free and open source Android apps that nobody focuses on because not there aren't very many channels specifically about Android apps, as well as I will also be looking at FOSS desktop apps that are both on Windows and Linux. And I'm going to just start making higher quality videos in general. So instead of doing a video whenever I feel like it, from now on I'm going to be doing a weekly video. So, yeah. So, anyways, thank you for watching this video. I know this video is probably going to get me a lot of hate, but uh, I will not be d deleting this video. If this video gets a bunch of hate, then hate comments. Well, then you have an example of what the Linux community can be like. So if it gets a lot of hate comments, then boom, that's my proof. So if you if you leave a hate comment, you're basically proving my point. So actually do leave hate comments if you want. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Okay, so hate comment, uh, let's just talk about his last point if you leave hate comments you're going to prove his point so i'm leaving a video a reaction to your or i guess rebuttal i however you want to take this video or a response video if you want to go old school youtube ish um is this hate am i yelling am i screaming am i ranting am i any of that no what I'm saying and what I'll continue to say is there's assholes and douchebags in every aspect of life, in every community. 
You know, there's always that one kid down the road that's the bully or the asshole or the douchebag that nobody else likes because of who they are and how they are. So most people avoid that kid. You can't judge the entirety of the community based on the bully down the street. The bully down the street is the bully down the street. The rest of the kids from where you are to the bully aren't going to necessarily be assholes and douchebags. So, I hope you don't leave. I think it's a learning experience that, unfortunately, I don't think you've quite had yet. Now, some of this is this is not me like trying to talk down. I don't want to want to come come as across as that way, but it, it, a lot of it's going to be understanding that there's going to be difference of opinions. There's going to be things that people don't always agree on, but there's going to be this weird thing. You can agree to disagree, and it's okay. So, again, hope you don't leave. But if you do, totally cool with it. That is 100% your choice and 100% your reasoning. And it doesn't matter what anybody else says. So, I wish you the best of luck, whatever community you wish to stay in or go to. You guys know what to do. Rate it, subscribe. Peace.